I did study interplanetary geography at Quasar Community College in the Cosmos Redland Galaxy. Go black holes onwards and upwards. <laughs> no. No, Trot. I said your ways. Er, ways? Oh, why didn't you say so? I also studied intergalactic geography. Erways is a planet in the Sombrero Galaxy that is very similar to the Earth's solar system's seventh planet, Uranus. Rock, watch your language or you will scare away our Earth viewers. <laughs> now, as a tribute to you, Earthlings, we shall be interviewing some of your most fascinating beings, monsters. We shall determine whose monster powers make them the most superior being on Earth, though the <coughs> most superior Earth beings are still far inferior to us Terunians. Or us Torontonians, eh? Lousy Earthlings for no show for hockey at the last intergalactic game. <laughs> Enough, Trop, or it's the penalty box for you. Now, let's start the task of finding out some answers to the mysteries of these earthly monsters, shall we? Lazarians and Gerbudians, please welcome our first guest, the heartless prince of darkness, the bloodsucker who also enjoys strawberry smuckers, Count Vladimir Dracula. <laughs> Hello, Belandia. Hello, Chalk. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Dracula. Please, call me Vlad. It's so nice to be here with creatures of such intellect and sophistication. The villagers upon whom I speak do little to nurse my voracious intellect. You feed your intellect? What does it eat? How does it eat? It's a figure of speech, you spineless nincompoop. Hey, <laughs> what's my being an invertebrate have to do with it? Vlad, I see here that you are often referred to as a real ladies man. What does that mean? Well, I do find the area ladies irresistible, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the look it. Oh, and they do find my charm irresistible. Liar! <laughs> what was that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe across the line? Yes, I'm sure that's what it was. A cross line. Now, getting back to our interview. Vlad, why do they call you the Prince of Darkness? Because I do my best to work in the dark. <laughs> because vampires can't go out in the daylight? The sun, it kills vampires. <laughs> what a terrible impediment that must be. Why, we Gertmudians naturally absorb the energy from many suns and stars so that we need hardly to consume at all. Ah, that must be so nice. I have to skewer so many enemies just for a few pints of fresh blood. Liar! There it is again. <laughs> Who is that? Ah, uh, let's talk about your special powers, Vlad. I see here that you cannot enter another's living unit uninvited, but you can turn yourself into... A bat? <laughs> a lot of good that would do. Earthlings are terrible cricket players, eh? And lousy baseball players, too. <laughs> yes. Not that kind of a bat. Why am I not surprised that you didn't study the background information that I sent you? Yes, I can turn into a bat so I can sort of fly through the night sky in search of my next victim. Liar! He's a liar! Uh, that sure does sound like my dear old mother, but it cannot be because she died of, uh, uh, lightning. Yes, lightning! Oh, Vladdy, why would you lie? Well, Vlad, it appears that we cannot keep it a secret any longer. We've invited a special guest today. Earth viewers and universal evildoers, please welcome to our show, The Mother of Darkness. The old hag who likes to nag. She's a wizard in the kitchen with an old rat or a dead cat. Dracula's mother, old bat. <laughs> mother, no! Bloody, why? Why? Why would you come on the television and make up so many stories? Mother, 
I, I, what are you doing here? Setting the record straight, apparently. Are you saying, Mrs. Dracula? Now, now, dear. Mr. Dracula has been dead for five centuries now. You can just call me by my first name, Old Bat. Very well, Old Bat. Are you saying that Vlad here is not who he says he is? He certainly is not. I knew he wasn't a ball player. I mean, look at that pale epidermis and those puny appendages. I bet he couldn't even hit my patented space splitter or intergalactic beamer. What about skewering victims and drinking their blood? Is that true, old bat? Huh, I wish. Vlad is a type of vegetarian vampire. He only eats organic blood from the local Transylvanian farmer's market. <laughs> I, he can't even shop for himself since the market's only open during the daylight. I have to do all the shopping and the food prep too. Mother, I told you that cutting ants and humans is just too evil for me. And he has so many allergies. Garlic, crosses, holy water, wooden stakes, oh, and the sun? That's another lie. How else do you think I keep this lovely golden tan? Uh, well, what about turning into a bat? That's a wee bit evil, I suppose. <laughs> Some bad he's got. No better, no better, no better. Swing batter. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Vlad is definitely afraid of heights. Which is strange for someone who's undead. Anyway, he won't even go up in the high castle tower to spy evilly on the helpless villagers below. Hmm, so I would assume that he's not a ladies' man either. I bet he always strikes out. <laughs> Valendia, he hasn't taken a bite of one pretty girl. Not ever. He can't even get up the nerve to invite them over to the castle. How can I have a relationship when you won't respect my privacy, mother? Relationship? You're supposed to drink their blood, not fall in love with them. No, I'm afraid the only woman for, for poor pathetic Vladdy is me, his dear old mother. Unless. And that's what, Mother? Are you seeing anyone, Glendia? Perhaps you'd like to come visit Vladdy at the castle sometime. <laughs> Mom, you're embarrassing me. I am not. Besides, somebody's got to find you a girlfriend. Now, don't worry, Glendia, dear. He won't drink your blood. He's so nervous, he's never even kissed a girl. This is to me. <laughs> monster he is. <laughs> Listen here, Chihuahua. If you revert so far away, I fly up those and suck your blood all down. Down good. Well, it looks like our orbit will take us over Transylvania any minute now. So what's stopping you from turning into a bat and flying up here to meet me, Vladdy? Oh, that's right. You can't because chickens don't fly. Bop, mark, bop. Now, drop. Do not mock our pale, feeble guest. Feeble by I ought to. Young man, you watch yourself. You will not speak to these young ladies like that. Melinda, I am so sorry for his behavior. That is what happens when a person holds up in a castle all alone for a thousand years. No social skills. It's quite all right, old vet. And thank you so much for coming on to our show. Oh, goodness. Will you look at the time? No wonder Vladdy is so crabby. He's a hangry boy. I must be getting to the farmer's market before they sell us old, crabby, Vladdy favorite cow's blood. I'm hungry now, mother. May I have a juice box for dinner? Now, Vladdy, you mustn't spoil your appetite. Oh, mom. Doomed, I say. 
Well, that is a given, but we must be moving on to our next guest. Before we do, here's a word from our sponsors. Natural, organic, real, clean as a crisp morning dew. Orchid Family Farms means quality. The year was 1947 when my great-grandpappy, Pat Morgan, uprooted his life in the big city and moved across the country to start a new life right here in Morganton, Oregon. And the first thing Pat Morgan did was start a farm. His first crop was in Oregonian begonias, but from those humble beginnings, Oregon Family Farms has become the largest provider for free-range organic foods, not just in Morganton, Oregon, but beyond. Our cattle are grass-fed and completely hormone-free. Which, which means you can be sure that any blood you drink or brains, livers, or other organs you need come from the most responsibly sourced livestock in the universe. So look to Oregon Family Farms for all your bloodletting and monster building needs. There's a reason they call us the Prime Oregon. Oregon Family Farms. We put the organ in organic. Giraffes, 
please welcome the monster of Kong, I mean, <laughs> Frank's creator and curator, the scientist with a very short client list, the doctor who's also an author, Mary Shelley! <laughs> character that I created. What do you mean? You make me? Yes, I made you. You're disturbing but you're admired my own creative morality. Or mortality. I can't remember for sure, but I know that came to me in a terrible dream. The manifestation of a fevered nightmare. The pale green skin, the bolts in the neck, the two big suits, the sloppy seizures, even the scar from where Dr. Frank entered your tiny little pea brain. Uh, no! You no make me! You to me! Frank no likeness, Mary! <laughs> just, just be quiet. <laughs> uh, what's that? Why, this is a book, Frank. Your book. And if you don't behave right this second, I will erase you. I'll write you right off the page. He won't exist? Bye-bye to this burly behemoth? <laughs> That's right, gone for eternity. Or even better, maybe I'll turn you into a fairy princess. A fairy princess would be kind of nice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, then I'll turn you into some forest creature in a fable. One of the bad ones. Like a Hubert de Care or Cowardly Lion. Is that what you want? To be a cautionary tale with no purpose other than to teach a moral lesson? Oh, Frank hates cautionary tales and moral lessons to control. <laughs> Pardon me, Mary, but isn't the story of Dr. Frankenstein and his monster already a cautionary tale that teaches a moral lesson? If I may, I believe Miss Shelley's book is absolutely a story of morality that presents a pressing underlying question. Who is the real monster? Monster or Dr. Frankenstein? My trot, that is quite good. Yes, well, I also studied intergalactic literature at Quasar Community College. <laughs> Mother told me literary studies were a waste of time, but 10 years later, and I'm already halfway through my first novel. That'll show her. Oh. <laughs> uh, Okay. <laughs> yes, Trot, that is the understanding of most pundits. But they were wrong. It's not Dr. Frank nor his the monster who's the monster. It's me. <laughs> I'm the monster. Sounds about right to me. <laughs> <laughs> but Mary, how are you the monster? Well, you may have heard that my husband drowned. Well, yes, I See that here in my notes. He kept leaving the toilet seat up. So I pushed him from the boat. It was I, Mary Shelley, who killed my poor, poor Percy. <laughs> Why, Mary dear, I hardly think that makes you a monster. Valendia is correct. With you earthlings call murder, we intergalactic species consider a simple cycle of life. In fact, we Torontonians eat their mates to nourish the eggs of their young. Wait, there's more. Have you heard of Hawaiian pizza? Um, is that where they put uh, tomato sauce, cheese, and pineapple on a baked dough disc? Yes. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that there are earthlings who put pineapple on a pizza and call it Hawaiian? <laughs> pineapple is even native to the Earth Island of Hawaii. It's a travesty throughout the universe. Yes, well, I invented Hawaiian pizza too. <laughs> it 
It also became the Peace Giver Nightmare. <laughs> you are from Europe, not Hawaii. That is true. And shouldn't it really be called Costa Rican pizza? Perhaps. It should not exist at all. But we earth writer can write anything into existence. You just write it down and it exists. Wow. Now that is what I call a superpower. Uh, Frank hates pineapple on pizza. Frank wants pepperoni with cheesy breadsticks. <laughs> Uh-oh, looks like Frank's really on a rampage now. I better get to rewriting. Last time Frank went on a rampage like this, he wound up destroying a whole village. And they held me liable for the damages. Can you believe that? beyond their solar system. I bet they've never even heard of a twin-engine automated atomic consolidator. <laughs> still, Mary was very evil, if not quite superior. She's so evil, I bet she invented Canadian bacon, too. Did you know that Canadian bacon is neither Canadian nor bacon? <laughs> yes, Croft, I do you believe that there was a war fought over that? <laughs> it seems the real monster here is bad science fiction. After all, who would make a creature out of used fresh flesh, which is so delicate and green? Uh, don't they know that metal alloy cyborgs last forever? Why, my brother Jeeves is just as good today as when he was assembled by Sears and Robot more than 10,000 Earth years ago. They sure do not manufacture them like they didn't long ago, do they, Valendia? That is truly true, Trot. Speaking of oldies but goodies, <laughs> as you Earthlings like to say, let's bring on our next guest. But before we do, this. Here. 
so much better than Frank. Am I right? Talk about Dudley! <laughs> oh, it's not that. It isn't? No. But we're the number one show in the galaxy. Who wouldn't be excited to be here? Oh, no. Sorry. I am excited to be here. You had me worried there for a second. Of course you are. But also, can't you see it? Um, see what? Out there. Out where? Is it the Aussies? Have they come for me? I knew the Osmandians would track me down on her one of these days. No, the moon. It's a full moon. Oh. Is that so? She's right, Belindia. The Earth moon is full tonight. And isn't it glorious?
Oh, that's simple. You can just pick one up at any pet supply. Truck! What have you done? Only what has begun, Valendia. Phew, I'm glad she's gone. Full moon, you know, gotta be with the family. Truck, I must say, I am disappointed by your insubordination and must demand that tiff, 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 Melendia, you better behave or you'll be spending the night in a creep. I still can't believe how well that worked. <laughs> Let's just move on to our final guest. Shall we?
Hello. Hello, Valendia. Thank you for having me. Uh, hold on. There seems to be a problem with the transmission. Are you there, Invisible Woman? Yes, I'm here. Uh, we can hear you, but we cannot see you. No, no, I'm here. See? <laughs> Jumping Jupiter, you're a coffee mug? Seriously, Valendia, where did you find these guests? No, this is just my morning cup of coffee. It's morning here on the coast. Mm, nothing like a good cup of joe to begin the day. Uh, joe! Should we call you Joe, Miss Um Coffee Cup? No, no. Invisible woman is just <laughs> fine. There still seems to be something wrong. Uh, tell us, Joe. Invisible woman. What is it like being a Floating coffee mug. Seems like a very um, unusual power, eh? That is not my superpower. Ah, uh, then what is your superpower? Oh my, well so many things, where do you begin? Let's see, I'm passionate about my work and very enthusiastic about what I do. I'm focused and follow through with any project I'm assigned to. I'm very group oriented and an excellent addition to any team. I'm a good listener and No! Not that! I'm sorry, have I said something wrong? Yes! I asked you what your superpowers are. Okay, well I love art and music and oh, dancing, I love dancing. No! <laughs> Those are not superpowers. Well, but they are. I have to agree with the invisible woman here, Melendia. I studied dance and fine art at Quasar Community College. You studied dance. I did, with a focus on modern dance. Check out my Toronto slide. Or how about the Saskatchewan strut? <laughs> no, everyone have a seat. Invisible woman, you're supposed to tell us about your superpowers. I'm sorry. I. It's okay. I mean, it's not okay. Because we are live on the airwaves right now, and you've embarrassed me in front of the entire galaxy and our live studio audience. But please, go on. <laughs> I just thought of something, Valendia. We do not. Have time for your interruption, Strong. This interview is already way off course. Just hear me out, Vortex. Fine. What is it that you have to say? Well, her name is Invisible Woman. So? So? What? I know it may be a stretch, but go with me here. What if her superpower is Invisibility, eh? Trump, you're a genius! But that explains everything. Tell us more about your invisibility. Oh, that? Yes! That! Well, I don't exactly consider a superpower. I mean, it's not exactly easy being invisible. Ah, so you are invisible! Aren't you? I guess, but aren't we all in a way? No, actually. Uh, you see, Trot is not invisible. I am not invisible. Wait, am I invisible, Trot? If I may, I believe the invisible woman was invoking a metaphor. A metaphor. Yes. <laughs> and what exactly is a metaphor? Is it for or against the galaxy? <laughs> Metaphors tend to be for galactic good vortex. Calm down. Very well then. Tell us more about this meta invisible woman. What else is meta for or against? I was just trying to point out that a lot of Earth women feel invisible a lot of the time. So it's not exactly a superpower, especially when you're actually invisible like me. I'm not tracking with you. 
How can the power of invisibility not be a superpower? Can you not walk into a circular fried dough shop and take whatever circular fried dough you like? Uh, you speak of the glorious earth donut.
If I could dog train tools, rule the entire galaxy with good dog training clippers. I'm your announcer, Paul Dardo. Until next time, wishing you a good Earth rotation from the sun and a happy daybreak from the pending doom by in takeover by intergalactic forces with clippers. Uh, how about just good night? <laughs>